Welcome, Period 5. Hashtag Team iPads. Kylie here to talk to you about the Chinese dynasties. Starting with the Sui Dynasty. No, not sweets. I said Sui. S-U-I. There, that's the Sui Dynasty map. Anyways, the Sui Dynasty only lasted 29 years, from 589 to 618 CE. The ruler was Yang Jian, who dispatched military forces to Central Asia and Korea, levied high taxes, and demanded labor services. I demand you to do this. But why? Because I'm the ruler. That's why. Transportation now. That's better. Now where was I? <laughs> 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 Knocking over globes. That's where I was. One of their most important accomplishments was building the Grand Canal, the longest artificial river in the world. It linked networks of earlier canals established with economic and political development and also cultural unity. The canal promoted trade between North and South China. Mm -hmm. 240 miles long. About just a little bigger than this. In this dynasty, China went under reunification that made the society stable and peaceful. They also established a new political system called the Three Department and Six Ministries, which was the first in Chinese history. Under this system, the royal power was enhanced and the weak division, the court, became detailed. Panda, I need you to go attack them. And other Rudolph and other reindeer, you go over there. And, and you bear, you stay right where you are because you are perfect. The selecting talent was thoroughly overhauled. The traditional Jupong Zong Zeng, or the nine ranks of officials, because honestly, Jupa Zong Zeng, if I'm even saying that right, is way too hard to pronounce. The hierarchical system was replaced by the imperial examination system, which connected studying, the taking of examinations, and attaining an official position. Instead of how they had it before, where the ruling family just took over, People started taking exams because, you know, they actually had to know stuff and be smart. After the Sui Dynasty, the Tang Dynasty took over. Dun, 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 dun. The Dynasty lasted 300 years, from 618 to 907. I mean, 29 years? 300 years? Wow. Tang Taizong was the ruler. They expanded into Manchuria, North Korea, and Vietnam. But they also went to the Aral Sea and the High Plateau of Tibet. There, they had a tributary, tributary relationships that they had. A tributary relationship is when the conquered and neighboring governments of the Tang Dynasty came to the Tang Dynasty and gave them gifts and declared that the emperor was supreme over their own government and themselves. For you, Queen Kyla. Bow, peasant, bow! Yes, Queen Kyla. Louder! Yes, Queen Kyla. Good, good. Be gone, be gone. <laughs> They set up a service that was a postal and curial system, and they controlled the Silk Road in Central Asia. They had three policies that made them successful. Transportation and communication, the equal field system, and a bureaucracy based on merit. They had a golden age of art and literature, from 627 to 649. No, not that kind of gold. I mean golden like they had a flourishing of art and literature. Oh, my bad. The economy flourished, the social order was stable, 
Corruption never existed in the court, and the national boundaries were even open to foreign countries. A tax on elements was the greatest source of income. For a while, but when the population increased, the land elements decreased in size. Also, Buddhism declined and Confucianism became more popular. Sorry, Buddha. After the Tang Dynasty, China became a prosperous, productive, and powerful society. They went through an era of stability where block printing was invented. Block printing? obviously equals stability. I mean, there is no other explanation for it, right? Moving on to the Song Dynasty. Dun, 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 dun. Not that kind of song! Why, why, do, why do I pay you? Why do I pay you at all? You don't pay me. Anyway, this was the longest dynasty from 907 to 1279. Surprisingly, before this d dynasty, the Chinese were like Europeans, drinking wine, but in the song, they converted to tea and rice. And that's where most of the cultural traditions of China came from. Women were also introduced and forced to bind their feet. like that. Like when the ugly stepsisters of Cinderella tried to get their big feet into the tiny class slipper. But anyways, the upside was that there was lots of cultural achievements and agricultural and technological improvements. For example, farming techniques. These new farming techniques included the innovation of the plow, the expansion of the irrigation system, and new ways to cultivate rice. And as a cause of this, there was a population explosion. Babies everywhere. With those farming achievements, there were also cultural achievements like printing, calligraphy, and glazed porcelain. For the glazed porcelain, that's where we get fine china from that we use even today. But then, the barbarians and nomadic invaders came in to overrun the capital and cause abandonment of the north in, well, in 1127. I can't talk today. The Song Corps reestablished itself in the south in Hangzhou, where it ruled for another 150 years. Don't mind my dog in the background. You can't tell what it is. And that is the Southern Song Dynasty. Okay, as a recap, the Sui Dynasty was the shortest dynasty and made the Grand Canal that provided many, many benefits for the Chinese, like Trade as the number one thing because it's the most important thing. And the Tang Dynasty lasted 300 years and they had transportation and communication, the equal field system, and the bureaucracy of merit. This changed everything in China because before then you were just born into rulership. There was no use of the actual people in the dynasty. I mean, now anyone if they had the if, if they had the proper information and the proper schooling, they could be great leaders and great parts of the dynasty. And they witnessed the golden age. That's when m many many te technologies in literature and art came about because before then you were just doing farming or ruling and that created no cultural diversion at all. So the Song Dynasty was the longest and they got conquered, invaded, and eventually split into North, 
and south. That's when the Gherkin came in and the Vikings, and that's where we know today where about the Vikings who were very cruel and the Gherkins who who knows about the Gherkins? No one cares about the Gherkins. It's all about the Vikings. The Vikings who were cruel and nasty and took over the Asians. This is Kyla signing off. Goodbye, my lovelies.